Hi everybody, Teresa Louise here. Welcome to my channel. Well, finally, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> do number three in the quilting series. And, um, oh boy, you guys. <laughs> I have tried to do this video four times. <laughs> the first time, I didn't have the mic on. The next time, the phone rang, and it was from somebody that I needed to take the call from. The third time, the cat came through, and he had been napping for, I don't know, three or four hours. So, of course, you know, he's got to do this really loud meow. I won't do it, because <laughs> I don't want to blow your ears off. So, here I try it again. <laughs> okay, so in my last video, I talked about some of the tools that you could use to help you get started with free motion. And I just wanted to elaborate on that a little bit further. And um, before we get actually going on the machine, um, I know you're probably going, we just want to do it. But you got to practice some other things first. I know, I know. So the other items that you can use to help you are stencils. And I have a whole bunch of different stencils. Um, there's a grid. So what you do is you either, you could put this on your practice quilt sandwich or you can put it on your quilt and you can either take a pen or your favorite marking tool whether that's water soluble or iron off markers um, you can draw in between the lines or you know here or you can use what is called a pounce pad I have one I'm sorry I forgot to bring it over but it looks like a big eraser like we had in school and um but it's filled with chalk and so you just take that and bang it down over those lines and when you remove this then it leaves the lines in chalk on your fabric so these are really handy and um i really like the ones that do like a grid the squares um, the also the one that's pretty handy is one like this um, these here and to be honest with you I haven't used them that much um, just a few times because I'm all about free motion <laughs> just going for it Here's something else you could use. And there are just tons of these. If you go online, look them up. Um, let's see. These are from Home Stitches. Designed with lines. And it's out of Spokane, Washington. There you go. And I'm not sure where the purple ones are from. And I think all of the ones I have are out of Spokane. Um, these would be like for borders. There's another one. But you could also move it around with inside your quilt. And um, do like edge to edge. I use actually use this one in a border. Turned out really pretty. And here's another really handy one. And I also have a heart one. And this one would be really handy also. Boy, this would have been really handy for Becca's quilt. <laughs> I guess I need to hang them up so I remember that I have them. Okay, so there's some of those. And you can also get them in... Excuse me just a minute. 
Yes, I dropped one. Here's one that's feathers. So for those of you who have a hard time doing feathers, this would be really helpful to get you started. Um, the other thing is you can make your own. Like, I have a hard time making stars like this. So I made some templates. And just to get me going, just to get started. And you can put these like under your plastic. Remember when the plastic I showed you and you do your um, your practice with the uh, uh, Expo marker? You can put these under there and then trace around it and then move it, you know. But just to get you going, you know, get that muscle memory thing going. Or you can draw around these right on your fabric. So you can make those. Um, the other thing you can use is I have these, um, they call them pantograph. Now these you use on a long arm and you put it on the table of your long arm. And then you have to have a some way of tracing it along. I have used these, but I have looked through them and like got gotten patterns patterns off of them. And then I'll just do trace over it with my uh, vinyl clear plastic. So th these come in all different kinds too. And I think this one was for like a border, but then they have, this one is for like an all over. There's another one that's for, I don't know, different borders it looks like. All right, so there's those. And this one, um, I'm not sure, I've never purchased these before, but this is from um, Golden Threads. Uh, goldenthreads.com and this one happens to be from Marcia Stevens and it was $18 and it looks like you got three designs okay but you know you could get freezer paper and make your own design on the paper and then put it on your long arm table and trace it if you're artistic, yeah, you could do that. And if you're really good, you could sell, it, sell them to me. <laughs> okay, so there was a couple of other ideas for you. Okay, so I hope you guys have been practicing. Um, some other items you might like to have is some machine gloves. There's those. Um, so that's just one brand. They're white. Here's a pair I've been using. Um, they're not, I know they look dirty, um, but it's the dye from your fabrics. Because I don't garden with these. So they do wash up pretty good. So uh, you could, you know, throw them in the laundry. And then also we got these gloves from the Fat Quarter Shop in the Sew Sampler box a few months ago. I haven't really tried them, but I'm going to. And then I have these gloves from Fonz and Porter. And um, these are okay. I did cut the fingers out. Um, and the reason why I did that is so I could get a hold of the bobbin and so I could get a hold of the needle and I didn't have to take my gloves off that's why I did it so you could they still work you know you just would use these fingers when you're moving your fabric around so anyway um, 
the other thing is uh, just a quick tip I use these when I'm putting binding on my quilts because um, I have arthritis and holding the binding and holding everything down your hands get a little sore and it really helps to use some of these or these you know or they you can even use those fingertips now I do have some of those too Um, I have used these and it's kind of weird um, it's like my fingers kind of sweat a little bit in those because <laughs> they're, they're just all rubber there's no cloth on them at all for breathing but they do work okay so that's the different kinds of gloves I know there's more there's some really cute ones from that Angela Walters has uh, one of these days I'll get me Give me some of those. Um, the other thing is you might want to get a super slide. Now this goes on the top of the base of your machine right here. Um, you don't have to have it. Uh, you can wax this down a little bit with some like pledge or something and make it a little more slick. I've done that, doesn't hurt anything. You could also tape some freezer paper down on here uh, or tin foil. I've done, I've used tin foil. It's that's really easy to use. But um, whatever you use, you want to make sure that it clears your um, hole where your needle goes down, and you want to make sure your feed dogs are down also or else you're gonna rip it see which is what i did there <laughs> whoops so um the nice thing about these yeah they're nice and slick and you can also run this underwater and get it nice and clean and then it sticks again so there's some ideas for you uh, the other things you're going to need is you need a quilting foot and this is the one I have for the brothers okay um, I have tried other foot like a ruler foot and my brother's machine does not like it at all so I don't know if I was doing something wrong or what but um, I have never tried again. Once I got my long arm, <laughs> I got spoiled. So I used this one. Now, a lot of people like to have like an open toe foot so they can see. And you can see that that's clear plastic, okay? Now, I don't know if it's just the brother's machine or if other machines are picky too, but I tried... Uh, pop that plastic out of there so I could see my needle better and it didn't like that either I started um, the tension I couldn't get the tension to work right or I started getting a bunch of robin's nests underneath and it just didn't like it all and once I put that back in it was fine so I don't get it yeah don't get that at all all right um so find out what what you need for your machine and get those and i just i have two what i did do is i drilled out the hole that was in the plastic that little hole there i drilled that out to be a little bit bigger um one reason why i did that well two reasons I could see my needle a little easier and the other reason is every once in a while when you're going over a seam it just might push this foot just a little bit and then all of a sudden your needle um, digs into that plastic and you break a needle 
I did that a couple of times. Or you put in an extra hole. You see that little teeny hole right there? Right up there? That's from the needle. <laughs> so once I did that, then... I, I did never have that problem again. <laughs> and you want to check these every once in a while because they do get loose. And what I ended up doing was um, this one got really loose. And so I took some super glue and I put just a little dab of super glue on the end of this right there. So it quit wiggling back and forth. Um, this is a brand new one and it's working fine now. I don't know why, what happened that made that loosen up, but it did. All right, the next thing is your needles. Now, I usually use um, 8012 and I use mostly Microtech. But I also use the 9014. And what needle I use is depends on what thread I'm using in my machine. Not necessarily how much I'm going through because you're going through cotton, batting, and cotton. You shouldn't really need a bigger needle than 8012. However, if you're using a really heavy thread like a 30 weight, um, you're going to need to use the 9014. But if you're using like a 40 weight or a 50 weight, you could probably get away with using the 8012. Definitely on the 50 weight, I would use an 8012. Anything uh, smaller than um, a 50 weight thread, like a 60 weight, I would get a smaller needle. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're having problems and you can't get your tension adjusted, and um, it could just be that you're using the wrong needle. It's really beneficial to get um, either your book for your machine or a lot of the thread companies have a needle guide. So look those up and know what thread or what needle to use with your thread. The other thing I have found is this needle may work fine with Orophil. And um, Orophil is usually 50 weight. But it doesn't work with some other brand <laughs> that is also 50 weight. That's like polyester. So I would use a, a smaller needle and it would work out just fine. So those are some of the things you have to play with. So put a fresh needle in. I have a fresh needle in. I am going to have to put my walking foot on. Okay, the other thing is you want to do, remember when I said that you want to be able to see the top of your um, quilt sandwich and the bottom. You want to see the bottom thread and the top thread. So put a light colored on top and a darker color in the bobbin or vice versa, whichever you want to do. But just make sure that they there's a lot of contrast to start out with, okay? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do real quick is put my foot on. I'll show you how to do that if you haven't done it. Now, I will be using the Brothers PQ1500SL. This machine was made for quilting. It does one stitch straight, and it does it really fast. <laughs> you get 1,500 stitches per minute or however they calculate that, but it goes super fast. So, and um, you cannot adjust your speed. Like on some of them, you can go, you know, really slow. It has a 
a knob or something that you can turn it up or down. I wish this one had that. That would be really handy. But it doesn't, so you just, it's total foot control. Um, it does have a thread cutter, and it does have a needle up and down, and of course it has um, forward and back, and also this knob up here, I can adjust the tension on the foot pedal here, or the foot, yeah. So you'll want to do that, and I'll show you that in just a second too. All right, so let's get the light on. And I'll bring you a little closer. I found this um, uh, yoga mat <laughs> that I wasn't using. And I don't think I ever used it, actually. Maybe once. <laughs> I know. And I'm putting it on my table here. And I want to see if it makes a difference on the noise, the background noise that I'm picking up on my mic, like when I do the paper and when I hit the table accidentally. That's a test. Because <laughs> sometimes those noises are really loud. And then also I'm thinking it won't jiggle the table as much. So I have this nice yoga mat. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get rid of it. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, the other thing you want to do is um, make sure and oil, oil your machine if your machine has the oil uh, holes. <laughs> Some of the new machines, like my Viking, there's no place to oil it. You take it in and have it serviced, and I'm hoping you know, they do all the stuff that's necessary. Okay, so I want to take this foot off. And you just undo that. Make sure you're... And this will raise up just a little bit higher, and you can pull that out a little bit easier. Well, I can't see. Sorry. Um... So I'll put that foot down there, and then put this one in. And okay, then I'm just gonna make sure. <clears throat> that my needle is where it needs to be. I'm just going to barely tighten it. Okay. And I'm going to thread my needle. Oh, one other thing you need to do, too, is... Test your stitch out on regular mode before you make any changes. Just test the stitch out. Make sure it's it sews perfectly the way you like it before you even start, before you make any adjustments, okay? So on this one, you won't be able to see, probably. It's that pink one right there. So I can barely see the brown on the back side, my bobbin. I can barely see it. It's the little teeny hole where the holes are. And on the back side, I can barely see the pink. And that's what you want. That's how you want it. Okay? So when you use the same colored thread on the top and the bob bottom, you won't see that at all. Okay? So... That's a good tip uh, just for normal sewing, too. All right, the other thing I'm going to do is, here's my bobbin. I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. And, you know, you check your tension on your bobbin, put it in your hand, lift that up, 
used to stay standing like that, but uh, you shouldn't be able to lift it up off your hand. Uh, the bobbin tension is the big nut, and it's righty tight, you know, right, righty tighty, lefty loosey, when you hold it like that. And you're looking at it and this one is fine and I usually just use my thumb but I also have a little teeny screwdriver um, that I can use on there too okay so I'm gonna put that back in make sure it's clicked in all the way and I'm just gonna leave this tail out for now because I'm gonna grab it. So I'm going to use my hand spinner, whatever it's called, <laughs> and I'm just pulling that thread up. I'm going to grab a hold of it, and I don't want it through the foot yet. So I'll just Okay. The one reason why you want I wanted a open toe was so I can get this in there, but you're just gonna have to push it through. Push it through the hole. Grab hold of it. Or you can just start sewing. Did you see what I did? My hand was probably in the way. Okay, that's why you want a bigger hole there, another reason. Okay, I think I'm ready. Now, the next thing I need to do is drop my feed dogs. Now, on this machine, um, I have an option to drop that feed dog, so I'm going to drop them all the way down. They're down. Now, once you do that, your stitch regulation shouldn't matter at all, but I always feel better when I put it up on three or four. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> I just do. One of those things. Okay, so my feed dogs are down, and this machine, I can raise the pressure off of my foot there. So I'll do that. I don't want to go too high. I'll get my sandwich in there and see where we are. So grab your sandwich. And there we go. See? Now I could come down a little bit more. Just a little too much thread there. Just want to make it to where you can still move that pretty easily. Okay, now I'm just going to roll this out of the way because this is that sandwich we made. We don't have to start in the middle. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to start with number one of my practice doodles that I gave you, which was the up and down. This one right there. Okay, I'll do that one first. And I'm going to do it in the smaller section here. And I'm going to start on the bottom. Now, For now, I am just going to not worry about my thread, or you can. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the bottom thread up. I might as well show you how to do that. Okay, so you know I brought the bobbin thread up already, so it's underneath there. You've seen me do that, so that's all I'm going to do is do that again. I'm going to put this on one of my lines where I want to start. 
and I'm just going to go down and I'm just, as soon as my needle gets back up, I'm going to pull on my thread. I'm going to move my foot one way or the other. Okay, so I moved it off to the side and then I'm going to pull my bobbin thread up. Come on, bobbin thread. Well, it didn't grab a hold of it. Let's try that again. Oh, it did. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it did pull it up. Here I am pulling on it. No, that's something else. That's not. Something happened here. All right. Oh, I didn't have it all the way up. It's the needle. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so my bobbin thread is right there. There's my bobbin thread. And I'm going to bring my needle back down again. Bring it up. It's weird. Well, folks, this is real life. <laughs> Doesn't want to do it. There, finally. Okay, got them both. Shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> Too many years on the long arm. All right, so now you want to make sure you put your foot down. Otherwise, you're going to have a big mess. And I'm going to roll that up. I'm going to put my glove on. Hoping you can see all right. Well, I guess I'll be able to tell when I play it back. Okay. So I'm starting where I brought the bobbin up and I'm going to do those. Now, if you want to, you could draw those on there first or you can just go for it. Let's go for it. So the faster my machine goes, the faster my hands need to go. And I could move my fabric a little bit more because I'm my stitches look good though. They do look good. How's it look on the back? Looks pretty good. Yep, looks pretty good. Um I can barely see the brown which is what I want and I can barely see the pink which is what I want I'm trying to bring you a little closer okay Put my other glove on here we go so I stopped up here on top so I'm just going to take a couple of stitches and then go.
Looking pretty good. Let's look at the back. Um, the back isn't too bad. Feels like it needs to have a little bit better bob and tension. I think I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. So that means I want my tension to be a little tighter. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so I'm almost to the end here. I'm going to take that pin out. Okay, so now you can either go this way or you can turn this. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Just turn it. Put that back down. Okay, so I, that was the one thing I practiced there. Now I can make those a little bit smaller. Now I can stop, readjust my hands. Using the same color thread, then you won't see those little specks. when I get down at the bottom. Okay. So, there was my little one. And the next one is going to be the L. So I'm gonna follow, just follow along here, till I get down to the bottom where my line is, and now I'm gonna make an L. Cursive. <laughs> Stop right down there on the line. You know, this line, just pretend that's your uh, seam. If you start going too fast around that loop, it's really going to start pulling your thread up. So that's the one of the good things about watching or using two different colored threads is that you can actually see what it's doing. And this is an indication to me that I am going too fast when I go around that loop. And then I slow back down and it looks okay. 
and then I'm going too fast around that loop again because I can see that brown thread getting pulled up. So I need to try and go a little slower around that loop. a little better. Oops, I poked myself with that pin. Thing you can do is go ahead and do your little L's and I'm going to do my C's instead just to show you what that looks like. And I'm going to just do little C's in this little line. And it's okay if you go back over your thread. Because, you know, this is free motion quilting. So there's my, my C's. Looks like my battery's dying. So there's my C's. I hope you guys you can kind of see it. And I better go get the cable for my phone. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and stop for now, you guys, before my phone dies. And you get the general idea. So in my next video, I'll do some more practicing. And um, But I'm already, like, I didn't even know I was 42 minutes. So that's how you get started practicing on your quilt sandwich okay if you happen to have those stencils you could um, put those stencil lines on here and that way you will stay within that the lineup right or you can make those lines yourself with a ruler or something and that but don't get so picky yet because you're just practicing this is if this is your first time just try to get the stitches down, okay? All right, so thanks so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please ask me below, and I'll either um, answer you down below or I'll add it to my next video, okay? Thanks so much, you guys. Now get out there and quilt something. Bye for now.